Hello one and all and welcome to the Math Magic Show. In this one we're going to take a look, a very careful, studied look, <laughs> at a calculus question. The question is, find the point of inflection. So let's take a look. All right, it's an old AP Calc BC question, right? Not, not too simple, in other words, a bit more interesting. So y is equal to x plus 1, and this is here uh, tan inverse of x this way. Question is simple, find inflection point on it. A lot of differentiation exercise. So y prime. All right, by the product rule, because x plus 1 is a function, tan inverse of x is another function, we're going to have the following. Differentiate the first one. That's going to leave us just the derivative of x, which is 1. Copy the tan inverse of x for now, and you're going to add to it the derivative of, well, keep the x plus 1, right? Then add to it the derivative of the tangent inverse of x. That's just 1 over 1 plus x squared. Clean this expression up a little bit, so it looks a bit more neat. All right, let's do that. Let me just pop some chalk out. Good. Anyway, it's going to be uh, tan inverse of x, let's see, yeah, plus x plus 1 divided by 1 plus x squared this way. This is just the first derivative. Now we got to differentiate this baby again. Well, hmm. All right, let's do that. So y prime, in other words, is what we are going, y double prime is what we are going to find. See, the brain wants to say y prime. <laughs> so let's go through the process. This derivative is simple. It's a cookbook, right? Approach on that one. So 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now the second one is a bit more involved because you have a rational expression, you have a denominator, numerator, I'm sure you know it's a quotient rule on that. So let's do it. Okay, so you can go with low d high minus high d low over low squared. I like that one. Say it a few times, I promise you will come to like it, okay? <laughs> so low is 1 plus x squared, okay? And then d high, the derivative of x plus 1 is just the derivative of x, which is 1. And then you're going to subtract from this, so low d high minus high, like this, and then d low, so the derivative of 1 plus x squared by the power rule is 2x, so that comes over here, right, and this whole thing is now hanging over 1 plus x squared, and then you got to square this quantity on top of it. Good, progress. Now, the rest of this is the more challenging part, to be honest, because here you got to now make one expression out of all of this. Okay. So pause the video and try this, okay? And I trust that you will. And you're not just nodding your head and saying, sure, sure, okay? <laughs> okay, anyway, let's go through the process. So take a look here, right? This, 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 <clears throat> there's a 2 here. In other words, this is 1 plus x squared, but this is to the first. This is to the second. We've got to fix that. So we're going to fix it as follows. We're going to say, uh, basically, multiply the top and bottom by an additional 1 plus x squared. So it's going to be an additional 1 plus x squared divided by 1 plus x squared and then squared this way. Of course, the reason for that is uh, 1 plus x squared divided by an additional 1 plus x squared is just 1. That's why you can do that, okay? All right. So then from here, next stage. Well, you got to distribute this and this. Right? Now, there's a 1 here, so I guess you could do it this way, but it doesn't change anything. So, you're just going to end up, in other words, with, let's see, 1 plus x squared minus, now be very careful, 2x over to the x and with the negative attached. Because both of them, you know, <laughs> look, <laughs> like this, right? It's a lot of distributive property business. Anyway, so 2x times x with the negative becomes negative 2x squared. And then that 2x times the 1 with the negative becomes a, a negative 2x right here. All right, and this is hanging over that 1 plus x squared quantity squared right here. Okay, continue. Clean this up as much as possible. Let's see. So now, put everything over one denominator, essentially. We're in that place where we can do that. So 1 plus x squared quantity squared. You should be able to see that. Yep. All right. Draw a bar. All right, put the pieces together on top. So 1 plus x squared plus 1 plus x squared that's a 2 up here, and then minus 2x squared and minus 2x. Stop and reflect a moment now. You really should do that. And ask yourself, well, we got to clean this expression of the numerator is looking kind of menacing, right? So let's see, friends. This is negative 2x squared. So there's an x squared from here, one of them, right here, right? There's another x squared here, positive. So if you add the 2 in the yellow circles, 
and then you can subtract this negative 2x, then they all disappear. This is x squared plus x squared, 2x squared minus 2x squared, that's zero, it goes away. Which means, in fact, over here, what we have nicely left over, if you think about it for that reason, is just, well, you've got the 1 plus the 1 with the negative 2x right there, you see? All right, so all that remains, therefore, at the end is basically 2 minus 2x hanging over that 1 plus x squared over, well, to the second this way. So as you can see, the differentiation step, like this step, is easy. The rest of it, that can be a bit time-consuming. Now, look very carefully at the expression on the bottom, okay? So let me point to some important pieces of information. <laughs> so first, this is 1, right? And you see then it says plus x squared. So because this here is being squared, it's always positive. And the 0 goes in. So x squared, if x is 0, it's 0. But then you add 1 to it, so the expression is positive. Now, in every other case, like for example, if x negative 1 goes in, we would have negative 1 squared, that would be 1 positive, plus the 1, that would be 2. And then you would square that with that 2, that would make it into a 4. In other words, the expression on the bottom is always positive, okay? Which means when there is a sign change in this expression, it has to come from the numerator. Let's study the numerator a bit more carefully, right? The numerator is a bit more interesting. It's 2 minus 2x, that's a linear expression just in the numerator. So as a result, take a look. For example, like if you take uh, just for the top here, okay? So we understand things better. If I do this, for example, like if x is the value 2, then look at the numerator. You would have 2 minus 2 times 2, which is 2 minus 4, which is negative 2, right? That's a negative number, okay? For example, if x is 0, then for the numerator, you would have 2 minus 2 times 0, which is 2. That's a positive number. So in other words, really, the sign change does come from the numerator, not from the denominator. So what we have to do now is take a look. You're going to do 2 minus 2x, set that equal to 0. All right, and then you're going to have negative 2x equals negative 2. Therefore, x equals positive 1. This, is, this causes a sign change in the second derivative. We are looking not just for the x-coordinate, though, of the inflection point. Think back to the original question. Not just the x-coordinate, we also need the y-coordinate. So you've got to take this value and plug it in there and see what pops out. That's all. All right, friends, let's do that. So y is equal, and now what I'm doing is this one right here, okay? It's going to go into, let's see, 1 right here, okay? Plus 1, plug it in there, and then tan inverse of 1, work through that. This is 2, tan inverse of 1, so it's 2. And then tan inverse of 1, if you perhaps think about the unit circle or a graph of the basic inverse tangent function, you'll discover pretty quickly that it's equal to, well, let's see, this is pi over 4. But of course, now what you can do is divide from here a 2, leaving a 1, divide from here, leaving a 2, which means all that remains at the end is pi over 2, right here. Therefore, putting all of this information together, <laughs> it is magical. <laughs> putting all of this information together, we basically end up with this point that has an x-coordinate of positive 1 and a y-coordinate of pi over 2. And that is the inflection point. All right, friends, I went through this at a furious pace. Nevertheless, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I'm sure you can appreciate it. Please leave some comments, share, like, subscribe. I will see you in another video.